Feeds account for 65 to 70% of total cost in a dairy farm. Lately, the cost of commercial dairy feeds have skyrocketed. In addition, the quality of commercial feed concentrates is not assured. And this challenge has pushed Mr. Rafael Kamemba to formulate his own feeds. For you to do this, it is important to understand two main factors, which are nutrient requirements of animals, composition, availability, and cost of feed ingredients. I, Victoria Masai, joins Mr. Kamemba at his Yojire farm in Township Ward, West Mugrango constituency, Nyamira County, as he formulates dairy meal. This is Yojire dairy farm, which is in Nyamira, and um, my name is Rafael Kamemba, I'm the one who manages the farm. Uh, here today we are, we are trying to show how we make uh, our dairy meal which we make at home here, which we, uh, we use to feed the animals, uh, simply because we, we discovered that the dairy meal we buy from uh, the commercial brands, uh, they, they are fairly expensive, and in many cases they don't have all the nutrients you would like to, to have your cow. Now in dairy meal, basically we, are, we have three different things that you need to feed the cow from your dairy meal. We have the, the energy providing, uh, uh, products now for energy that's the carbohydrates mainly we have uh, the wheat the wheat products we have wheat pollard we have wheat bran and then we have the maize jam those are the, the, the three major uh, byproducts that we use in in providing the energy for the cow now we have the others category which must be there that's the proteins in looking for the protein requirement for the cow we normally use a number of products depending on the availability but the common ones uh, in terms of protein content we have the soya bean uh, soya normally the cake from soya has very high percentage of protein which is up to the tune of uh, around 44 percent plus that's the crude protein uh, we have canola canola is the next protein which is normally having high protein content going at around 38 then after canola we have uh, Cotton cake goes uh, at a percentage of about 22. And then the next one, in that order, we have things like cobra. Cobra is a, a product from which comes from coconut. It's a protein product which is having a, a CP of around 22. And then we have a, another product which is common and the cheapest, which is sunflower. But when it comes to daily meal, you need to get those to get your protein correct you need to get your carbohydrates correct and then you need now the mineral salts plus the other additives which we shall explain as we go along we are intending to make about 800 kilos of dairy meal so here what we have put down here we have put uh, wheat pollard mixed with uh, with with wheat bran that's the first mixture we have put down here down here we already have two packs of the wheat pollard and the wheat bran. Two bags is about 140 kilos. That's already what you see on the ground. Now this is still energy. We are going to get another energy on top of this which is maize jam. This is maize jam which we, we, are, we are putting. And you realize we have to spread it, the products in such a way that they make an even layer. Although they are energy providing foods, they also have some proteins. We had put the two uh, products th that provide the energy, the carbohydrates, that is the, the wheat pollard, the wheat plan, and the maize jam. Now on top, we have put uh, what you call a toxin binder. So to counteract that toxins, that's why we apply a toxin binder. We put on top directly on the maize so that uh, as you prepare the dairy meal, it will be free of the toxins. We are now going for the next protein. So here we have uh, 25 kilos of canola. So we are going to add to this, this canola. That's, that's the first protein. Uh, we add on top. So the scale we use it to counter check the product. When you want to put a particular weight, you weigh and then you use. We are putting 
another uh, patch of maize jam. We put we put our toxin binder direct on top of it. So at the next product now we are putting cotton food. Now on top of this cotton, we shall go ahead and our wheat pollard and the wheat bran mixture. So this one we want to put 50 kilos of sunflower. next layer of uh, maize jam and then uh, as you show on top of it we shall put the toxin binder now we have done with the maize jams we now go the last patch of uh, the wheats So we are going to add 10 kilos on top of this, 10 kilos of the protein concentrate. Now we have what we call additives. Additives, they are not part of the mineral salts. Now what we are doing, we want to put the additives first, which all the cows take. Now we have divided our cows into different categories which they don't consume this. We have the dry cows. Now with the dry cows, you have to mix a particular, a particular mineral salt for it. But for the additives, they should be the same for all the cows. Now the first additive we are adding is this one, which is a mixture of enzymes that gives the cow the right functioning of the rumen. So we are adding uh, all of these five kilos now, first we want now to separate a little of this dairy meal for the dry cow. The dry cow basically is the cow that's preparing for the next lactation. So when a cow is having two months before it calves down, we, we give them the, the salt that is called dry cow salt. So we shall we separate a little of this now, just a little. We shall add a particular salt for the dry cows, the two. Then we shall mix it separately. Then we so you are adding the, the salt that's meant for the dry cows. the layers they go as, as we're putting the different products yes. when you now mix step by step you see the mixture the mixture is actually properly properly done yes. we are going to cut to cut some uh, some dale meal which we are going to feed the high high yielders for our case the high yielders are the cows that produce more than uh, 30 liters per per day we are putting the the premix, which is meant for uh, lactating cows. Now, when I do my costing of producing the patch of the area from the patches of the products, ingredients up to the mixing. It normally gives me a cost of about 44 shillings per kilo. So you see from the mixture uh, we make here, 
It's a saving of uh, more than six shillings per every kilo we make. In a week, in a week, if we are making, uh, uh, let's say, 800 kilos of uh, dairy meal, essentially we have saved 60 shillings times 800, which is very close to 5,000. At, at the session where I explained how we make the dairy meal for our cattle, since the inception of the farm in 2014, we have been making our own dairy meal. When you start making dairy meal, it's not an issue of just, you know, getting the ingredients and, and mixing them up. There's, there's, a, there's a scientific system where you have to get the ratios uh, weighed out properly so that you are able to, to get what you, your target is. Now, when you make dairy meal, basically you, you have a target uh, nutrition of value in most cases, we use the crude, crude protein content of the dairy meal. When you make your own dairy meal, it is, it is much better because you, you are sure the ingredients that are required are there. And you are also sure that the protein, which is your target uh, nutritional uh, parameter, is also uh, achieved. The, the method I normally use in making my dairy meal ratios it's a method called the Pearson Square Method, which is a non-scientific uh, uh, method of preparing dairy meals. And in this Pearson Square Method, if I can give an illustration on this sheet of paper, it's called a square method because uh, if you look at the, uh, the end, it's actually like a square. The middle figure, in this case I've chosen 20, meaning 20 is the percent crude protein I want to make in my, my ratio. My ratio. On my left side, we have the ingredients you are going to mix. Every ingredient, they have some level of crude protein. Like here, I've given two ingredients. We have, on the top left, we have the ingredients that give us the high protein content. They are actually protein, protein ingredients. And I've put them uh, in form of at their percentage of protein, like we start with soya. Soya has a high, a very high percentage of protein in it. We have canola, which is around 38. We have cotton, which is around 23. Then sunflower, which comes down to around 21. Now, these are the major protein ingredients which uh, we use. At the, the, the left bottom, we have the energy providing foods. And I've given uh, a number of them, like maize jam, we have wheat pollard, we have wheat bran. This and this, I'll put my X and Y. X and Y basically represents the amount, the amount of the particular ingredients you are going to put. So once you put your target at 20, that is the crude protein you want from your dairy meal. Now you have X, this X will be the amount of this particular product you will put. Y will be the amount of this product all in terms of percentage. Now to get the percentage you subtract from diagonally, let's say this is x, x20, you subtract, you get a figure down there, and then you subtract also diagonally from down here to the other end, right, right top, you get the figure there. So when the figure you get there, you add the two, you add 20 minus y plus that, that's the total. So the total now to get how much of x you should put, it is the total up plus the total down, then you get a ratio of X. Then how much percentage of X are you going to put in this product to get 20? Over the total of the two, that gives you the percentage of what you're going to add, the X product. Down here you do the same. To get the percentage of the carbohydrate product you're going to put, you get the figure down there, which is X minus Y, over the total of the two times 100. That will give you the percentage of the, the product you on the side of the carbohydrates. So basically that's what we do.